This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles for just $2.99 a month. More on them in a bit. In the fall of 2017, humanity was witness to a world-changing first. That October, astronomers using Hawaii's Pan-STARRS-1 telescope detected an object never before seen in our night sky. Known officially as 1L2017U1, it looked like an asteroid, but it behaved like a comet, speeding up as it passed by our sun to reach a staggering 88 kilometers per second. Its shape was unusual too. Maybe 10 times longer than it was wide, the object looked unlike anything previously seen. But the most amazing thing wasn't how it behaved or how it looked, it was where it had come from. The object those astronomers had detected had originated outside of our solar system. For the first time in history, humankind had welcomed an interstellar visitor. Today, 1L2017U1 is better known as Oumuamua, a Hawaiian word that loosely translates as a visitor from afar arriving first. But while most of us know its name, almost everything else remains a mystery. Where it came from, what it was made of, and what caused it to act in such a strange way are still wide open questions. Today, Geographics is taking a look at the first known interstellar object and digging through some of the current theories to explain its origins. In Western history, the year 1837 would be notable for several reasons. In England, a young monarch named Victoria ascended to the throne, beginning the second longest reign in British history. Not far away, the writer Charles Dickens was starting his work on his seminal novel Oliver Twist, while in North America, Michigan became the 26th state admitted to the Union, and Congress passed a separate bill recognizing the Republic of Texas. But while the earthbound events of 1837 would seem momentous to those living through them, it was something happening far, far away that would have the greatest impact on today's story. Millions of kilometers from Earth, a strange object crossed within a thousand AU of our sun for the very first time. Today known as Oumuamua, it came from impossibly far away, further away than any other object previously seen in our night sky. Although it would be another 180 years before anyone on Earth noticed its presence, its destiny was now set. Oumuamua would become the first interstellar object recorded in human history. During the near two centuries it took Oumuamua to reach the inner solar system, human civilization underwent unprecedented changes, and not just where wearing top hats and growing fabulous mustaches was concerned. Electricity was harnessed, the theory of relativity discovered, the atom split, the digital revolution sparked. By the time Oumuamua passed by Earth, humankind's would be ready to see it. Still, there was nothing inevitable about Oumuamua's detection. In fact, seeing our first interstellar visitor relied on some extremely lucky breaks. The first of those was the creation of PanStars. A giant telescope set atop a mountain on the Hawaiian island of Maui, PanStars 1 first went online in 2008, but didn't start making regular observations until May 2010. While that may seem like a long time prior to Oumuamua's detection, it was only a little over seven years. This compared to the likely tens of millions or even billions of years that Oumuamua Oumuamua had been adrift. Had our visitor crossed that 1000 AU mark in 1827 rather than 1837, it would have sailed right on by without us ever noticing. Luckily, that's not what happened. Even more luckily, NASA's Near-Earth Object Observations program gave PanStars a funding boost that, in 2014, allowed the telescope to begin spending 100% of its time looking for near-Earth objects. Still, we came frighteningly close to missing Oumuamua. As it entered our solar system, our first interstellar visitor came in at an unusual angle. If you picture one of those solar system models that you saw in school, maybe with the planets all lined up neatly on a flat plane, then Oumuamua would be dive-bombing in from above like a missile zooming towards our sun. Not that any missile had ever moved so fast. Currently, the fastest human objects are the Voyager spacecraft, which are hurtling out of our solar system at 15 kilometers per second for Voyager 2 and 17 kilometers a second for Voyager 1. This is so fast that it makes a bullet shooting out of the barrel of an M16 look like a gentle morning stroll. A bit in the Matrix when Neo dodges bullets, well, Voyager 1 would have splattered him all over the rooftop before he even got a chance to flinch. And Oumuamua entered our solar system, traveling at 20 26 kilometers per second, far faster than Voyager 1. 
By the time it shot past our sun, this already incredible speed would have increased by a factor of three. All of which may explain why we nearly missed it. On September the 9th, 2017, Oumuamua reached something called perihelion, the point where it gets closest to the sun. As it went zooming away again, it zipped by Earth, passing a mere 0.16 astronomical units from our planet, one astronomical unit being the distance from our world to the sun. By now, it was October the 14th. It's easy to imagine another timeline in which this was it. Oumuamua came barreling in and shooting back out again without anyone ever noticing. But not in this timeline. In this timeline, Panstars was now less than a week away from discovery, and it would change everything. The morning of October the 20th, 2017, started like any other for Robert Work. A Canadian astronomer in his late 30s, Work was attached to the University of Hawaii as a postdoctoral researcher, tasked in part with monitoring images taken by Pan Stars 1. When he first spotted the faint object captured in a 45 second exposure taken the night before, he just assumed it was another asteroid, one of many that he'd investigated over his career. Little did he know that it would be this single image that would secure his name a place in the history books. After comparing Comparing the image to one taken on the night of October the 18th, Work became convinced that the team had spotted a new comet. With telescope time tight, he called in favors and probably made all sorts of outrageous promises to get another chance to track its movements. But get another chance, his team did. It was then that they made two important discoveries. The first was that this new comet was in a hyperbolic orbit, which basically means it visits the sun a single time before vanishing back off again. The second was that it hadn't originated in the Cooper Belt or the Oort Cloud or anywhere close to home. Tracking back its movements, they could only conclude it had originated outside our solar system. You can probably remember what came next. The announcement made on October the 26th, the media scrum as we realized we were witnessing history in the making. At first, there was confusion over how to designate our visitor. In the early days, Oumuamua was named both A2017U1 for asteroid and C2017U1 for comet. In the end, the designation settled on began with one I for interstellar. It was the first time an object had ever received such a name. Yet the comet asteroid naming problem also highlighted another issue regarding Oumuamua. No one could tell what the heck it was. By the time Work and his team announced their findings, Oumuamua was traveling so fast that there was only a three-month window for observations to be made. By late January 2018, even the Hubble telescope would be incapable of tracking it. So astronomers across the world scrambled to catch a glimpse of our visitor while they had the chance. It's estimated that over 800 observations of Oumuamua took place over that winter. What those observations recorded was an object unlike anything we thought we'd ever see. At the time Oumuamua was first sighted, humanity had logged around 750,000 asteroids and comets in the night sky. None of them looked anything like Work's discovery. As Oumuamua retreated, the light it reflected regularly grew and dimmed by a factor of 10, meaning it was spinning. From there, its size could be estimated. And it's here that we get to the weird part. Oumuamua was estimated to be between 100 and 400 meters long, with a length of up to 10 times its width. Until that point, the most extreme aspect ratio ever recorded had been an object only three times longer than it was wide. Clearly, the cigar-shaped Oumuamua was a wholly new kind of beast. And that raised an urgent question. What else might be unique about it? Well, we'll answer that question in a few minutes, but first a quick word from today's space-loving sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Curiosity Stream is available on many platforms and web apps, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TVs. The list really does go on. If you've got a device with a screen that is connected to the internet, you're probably going to be able to watch Curiosity Stream. It's also offered worldwide and it's constantly being updated with awesome new content. Right now, for instance, they have a popular new documentary series called The Top Science Stories of 20 2020, obviously, features a few profiles on COVID-19, but also dives into CRISPR, the Mars rover, fossilized DNA, and several other exciting news stories that you might have missed last year. And if you're enjoying this video, I'd really recommend checking out a docu-series. They have 17 episodes, and the series is called Cosmic Front. If you're into this video, you'll probably really enjoy that one. Right now, you can go to curiositystream.com forward slash geographics for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. It's a great way to support this show, and it keeps us making more videos, and I really couldn't think of a better a sponsorship fit for this channel. And let's go back to today's video.
In the hundred or so days before it passed out of sight, one of the internet's favorite pastimes was comparing Oumuamua to Rama, the alien world contained inside a spinning cylinder from Arthur C. Clarke's Rendezvous with Rama. While sadly nothing in reality could quite match up to Clarke's imagination, what we did learn about Oumuamua was still fascinating. Aside from its odd, elongated shape, we discovered that our first interstellar visitor was spinning like crazy, rolling over sideways every nine or so hours and turning end over end roughly every two days. We also learned what color it was, a sort of reddish hue. This isn't actually all that unusual in our solar system. The Kuiper Belt object, Arakoth, has a similar shade as do parts of Pluto's surface. More interesting turned out to be what Oumuamua was lacking, a tail. Prior to Oumuamua's discovery, it was assumed that the first interstellar object detected would be a comet. And in some ways, Oumuamua did behave like a comet, speeding up as it moved away from the sun. Normally comets do this because ice on or near their surface gets turned to gas by the sun's heat. This gas then shoots off into space, giving the comet some extra velocity, a process known as outgassing. It's this, plus escaping dust, that gives comets the bright tails that we see as they streak through the sky. But Oumuamua stubbornly refused to have a tail, even when tracked for 30 hours by the Spitzer Space Telescope, which could see gases that would otherwise be invisible, it showed no sign of outgassing, which meant something else must be causing its acceleration, an acceleration far beyond what gravity alone could achieve. Strange, right? Well, it gets stranger. Pretty much every other plausible explanation for Oumuamua speeding up was investigated and debunked over those months, from the effects of drag or friction to Oumuamua having a strong magnetic field that was being affected by the solar wind. In the end, all we could say is, a species was that Oumuamua might have been a comet, but if so, it was the weirdest comet that anyone had ever seen. Sadly, our chances to analyze this weird comet were fast running out. In January 2018, the Hubble telescope made humanity's last observations of our strange visitor. Not long after, Oumuamua passed the orbit of Jupiter and into history. At the time of recording this video, it's still in our solar system. Even traveling at its ridiculous speed, it will take an age before it leaves our neighborhood. But in case you're wondering, here are some of these significant dates on its journey out. In 2022, Oumuamua will pass the orbit of Neptune, leaving even the ice giants behind. Two years later, it will pass Pluto's orbit. Then, in 2025, it will fly beyond the Kuiper Belt. Come 2038, when things like the COVID-19 pandemic are hopefully just a memory, it will overtake Voyager 1, forever moving beyond the reach of even human humanity's most distant object. At last, in 2196, Oumuamua will cross the point it last occupied back in 1837, the invisible line marking a thousand AU from Earth. Of course, by that time, it's entirely possible we'll have advanced far enough to send a hyperfast probe after it, one that can tell us, once and for all, what Oumuamua really was. But for now, the true nature of our first interstellar visitor must remain a tantalizing mystery. Still, that hasn't stopped scientists from coming up with some mind-blowing theories to try to explain it. On August the 30th, 2019, less than 18 months after we lost track of Oumuamua for good, humanity made another incredible discovery. 2i Borisov, named after the amateur Crimean astronomer he found it, was the second confirmed interstellar object ever detected. A rogue comet, it came streaking through our solar system with a vast visible tail of dust before finally fragmenting in early 2020. In other words, it behaved exactly how we expected an interstellar object to behave, which only served to further highlight how bizarre Oumuamua was. If we were going to understand and our first visitor, we would need a suitably strange explanation. Thankfully, science soon came up with some prime candidates. One of the most popular theories about Oumuamua's origins came in a mid-2020 paper by two astrophysicists from Yale. In it, they speculated that Oumuamua may have been a hydrogen iceberg. Although little researched, hydrogen icebergs are speculated to form in giant molecular clouds, vast cold regions many light years across where stars are born. In these clouds, temperatures are so low that even hydrogen becomes a solid. The theory goes that over many, many years, solid hydrogen molecules clump together to form an iceberg. Since the cores of these clouds last only a few hundred thousand years, any icebergs that formed would have a maximum size, one probably about equal to Oumuamua. Once the cores of the cloud dispersed, these icebergs would be cast adrift. As they floated through space, the light of distant stars would slowly eat away at their surface, potentially giving them weird, 
elongated shapes. Importantly, any hydrogen iceberg that got too close to the sun would start outgassing and speeding up, dispersing gas in its wake. But because the gas would be hydrogen, none of our telescopes would likely detect it. As you can probably imagine, this theory landed like a bombshell. Although hydrogen icebergs are theoretical and almost never studied, everything about the idea seemed to explain Oumuamua very neatly. But before you clap your hands together and declare, well, problem solved, you should know there are a few problems with this theory. The major one is that it's not actually certain that hydrogen icebergs could survive all that long in space. Hydrogen's melting point is so close to absolute zero that it's thought even the radiation of distant stars would cause the iceberg to decay on its journey through the void. As a result, an Oumuamua-sized berg would have a maximum lifespan of about 40 million years. And there's no indication Oumuamua came from a giant molecular cloud close enough to support that time frame. Hence, some scientists have theorized it was something else entirely, a fragment of a shattered planet torn apart by its own star. The theory comes from a paper published in spring of 2020. In it, the authors speculate that Oumuamua was once part of a planet, or comet, or planetesimal, orbiting a small, dense star. The last part is important, because most stars would burn up any object that got too close. But one just the right size, like a kind of evil Goldilocks, would instead tear them to shreds with its gravity. Known as tidal disruption, it would be a hell of a way to go. Whatever Oumuamua was once part of would have been torn to pieces in a process so violent it would have hurled jagged shards of rock spinning off into interstellar space. If one of these shards also happened to contain some ice trapped deep beneath its surface, it could accelerate as it passed another sun, just like Oumuamua. The idea that Oumuamua is a single fragment of a long dead planet destroyed in some forgotten cataclysm is all sorts of awe-inspiring, since such a disaster is one of the few ways nature is known to create shard-like like shapes on such a scale, it may also well be true. Currently, it's about the best explanation going, even if it doesn't explain everything about our weird visitor. But the fragments of a dead planet theory isn't the only one in town. It's time for us to, at last, plunge into the waters of the most exciting theory of all, that Oumuamua was our first encounter with alien technology. RV Loeb has an impressive resume. For the last decade, he was chair of Harvard University's astronomy department. He's been an institute director for the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, is involved with the board of national academies, and also helps out with the Breakthrough Starshot project. If you're wondering why this channel has suddenly morphed into CV graphics, it's because we want you to know that Loeb isn't just some dude sat in his mum's basement wearing a tinfoil hat and ranting about the lizard people. He's respected intelligence. And he's absolutely convinced that Oumuamua came from an alien civilization. Remember earlier when we said Oumuamua couldn't possibly live up to those internet memes comparing it to Rama? Well, turns out we were wrong. If Loeb is correct about this, and it is a big if, Oumuamua's detection would be perhaps the most significant event in human history. But not even Loeb is clear about what that might actually mean. That's because his theory allows two possibilities. One, that Oumuamua arrived by accident, and two, that it was sent here deliberately. The first possibility is simple enough. At some point in the dim and distant past, some unknown intelligent civilization sent something into deep space. That something either had an accident, or outlived its usefulness, or broke up, eventually forming the object that we call Oumuamua. The remnants of a bygone something that tumbled through space, forgotten even by its creators, until it was randomly snared by our sun's gravity. To back up this alien space junk theory, Loeb points to an object known as 2020SO. An asteroid discovered by Pan Stars in September of 2020, 2020SO had a lot of the same stuff going as Oumuamua. Sunlight seemed to push it, making it accelerate without any outgassing or comet tail. Unlike Oumuamua, though, 2020SO appeared to have originated in our solar system. A team of astronomers traced its orbit back and discovered that it was a rocket booster from NASA's 1966 Surveyor 2 mission. Since we know that Oumuamua originated outside our solar system, there's no chance that it was also NASA space junk. But that's not Loeb's point. His point is that if 2020SO had that whole weird acceleration with no outgassing thing going on, might that not be a hallmark of something artificial? 
In other words, maybe Oumuamua was the remains of a mission once flown by alien NASA. Intense as this possibility is, though, it's got nothing on Loeb's second theory. What if Oumuamua was sent to our solar system deliberately? The thinking here is a little hazier, but a lot of it seems to stem from Oumuamua originating in what's known as the local standard of rest. Since we're not qualified astrophysicists, big shock, I know, we're just going to defer to Loeb when he says that this could be a sign of intelligence since anything entering our solar system from this region would effectively disguise its point of origin, possibly something aliens would want to do. From there, Loeb goes on to speculate that the mystery acceleration was the result of a light sail, a type of technology we humans are currently developing that would allow a probe to be propelled purely by starlight. If that's the case, then Loeb thinks our first interstellar visitor was a message in a bottle, one designed to show any intelligent life that it encountered that they're not alone. Currently, R.V. Loeb is very much in the minority with his theories. The vast majority of scientists still think Oumuamua was the result of natural phenomena. But since we can't say for certain what it was, we also can't say for certain that it wasn't some remnants from a distant civilization far beyond our understanding. And for now, at least, that's where we have to leave it. At the time of recording, Oumuamua remains one of only two interstellar objects that humanity has ever encountered. But already, there are signs that this could change. In late 2022, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope in Chile is intended to begin a 10-year survey of our night sky. Among other things, it's expected that the telescope will be able to detect any other interstellar objects that enter our solar system with one detection per year expected on average. It's at this point that things get interesting. If we start to spot more and more objects like Oumuamua, the mystery will quickly fade. Just as the first pulsar ever detected was initially speculated to be a signal from another planet, it could be that Oumuamua is just one of those weird things we don't yet understand about our universe, a commonish object we've just never seen before. On the other hand, if our database of interstellar objects grows but we never again find another elongated spinning shard, well, it would prove at the very least that Oumuamua really was a unique event. So this is where our story ends today, not really with a conclusion, but with a mystery. One with implications so profound they could alter our entire understanding of the universe. But even if it does turn out that there are trillions of Oumuamuas out there, that won't change the importance of its discovery. In the fall of 2017, for the first time in human history, we witnessed something no one else had ever witnessed before. The first known arrival from another solar system. Think about that for just a second. In the annals of space exploration, there are some events that will never be forgotten. The first satellite in space. The first black hole detected. The first human to set foot on another world. To their number, we can now add the detection of Oumuamua, our first arriving visitor from afar. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, please do check out our fantastic sponsor, CuriosityStream. There's a link to them below. And thank you for watching.